Okay, let's look at another example of integer programming. The Great Threads company is capable of manufacturing shirts, shorts, pants, skirts, and jackets. Each type of clothing requires that Great Threads have the appropriate type of machinery available. The machinery needed to manufacture each type of clothing must be rented at weekly rates shown in the table on the next slide. This table also lists the amounts of cloth and labor required per unit of clothing, as well as the selling price and the unit variable cost for each type of clothing. In a given week, 4,000 labor hours and 4,500 square yards of cloth are available. The company wants to find a solution that maximizes its weekly profit. In this table, we have the data for our Great Threads example. There are five products, from shirts to jackets, and the information contained in this table includes rental cost for machinery, labor hours per unit of product, square yard of cloth per unit of product, selling price, and unit variable cost. Next, we are going to formulate the algebraic model for this example. To make things easier, let's say 1 is shorts, 2 is shorts, 3 is pants, 4 is skirts, and 5 is jackets. We are going to define our decision variables as follows. First of all, we have to decide whether to rent a machine, so we define RJ, whether to rent machine for product J, 1 means yes and 0 means no. Of course, we also have to define the uh, quantity. Let QJ be the units of product J to produce. The tricky part of this problem is that how many units of product J we can produce is constrained by whether we are going to rent the machine for this product. If we choose not to rent the machine, that means there's no way we can make any unit of this product. We're going to see that in our constraint. Next, let's look at our objective function. Of course, we would like to maximize the profit. And our objective function looks like this. 35 minus 20, which is the uh, unit profit of product 1 times Q1 plus 40 minus 10 times Q2 plus 65 minus 25, that's the unit profit of product 3 times Q3 plus all the way to 110 minus 35 times Q5. But don't forget, we have the cost of rental as well, so we're going to subtract rental cost, uh, which is minus 1500 times R1 minus 1200 times R2 minus all the way to 1600 times R5. Next, let's look at the uh, constraints. The first two constraints are obvious. They are labor and cloth constraints. The amount of labor we're going to use, which can be written as Q times Q1 plus Q2 plus all the way to A times Q5, must be less than or equal to labor hour availability, which is 4,000 hours. Similarly, the amount of cloth we're going to use, which is 3Q1 plus all the way to 5.5 times Q5, must be no more than 4,500 square yards. Next, let's deal with the tricky part of the constraint. As we talked about earlier, the number of units of product J we can produce must be constrained by the fact whether we are going to rent the machine for this product or not. Let's use product 1 as an example. The quantity we would like to produce is Q1. It must be less than or equal to R1 times the minimum of 4000 divided by 2 and 4500 divided by 3. Note that 4000 is the uh, 
total number of labor hours available, and two is how long it takes to make one unit of product one. So we cannot make more than 2,000 units of product one. Similarly, in total, we have 4,500 square yards of cloth available, and it takes three square yards to make one unit of product one. As a result, another natural limit is 4,500 divided by three, and we have to pick the minimum number between those two. But don't forget, in the end, we have to take into account whether we're going to rent the machine or not. If we decide not to rent the machine for product one, that means R1 is equal to zero. As a result, Q1 cannot be positive. So the constraint would be Q1 less than or equal to zero. But what if we decide to rent machine one, that means R1 will be equal to one, then the maximum amount of product one we can produce must be no more than the minimum between 4,000 divided by 2 and 4,500 divided by 3. And we're going to do the same thing for all the other four products. In the end, of course, we have the uh, non-negative constraint and binary constraint. Now we're ready to look at our Excel spreadsheet model. In this template here, we have the uh, information on each of those five products. For example, over here, that is how many hours it takes to make one unit of shirt. And this is how much cloth it needs to make one shirt. Selling price of shirts, variable cost of shirt, and fixed cost for equipment rental for shirt. And over here, they are our decision variables R1 to R5, our binary variables. Here we have to decide whether to rent the machine for product 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The other decisions are how many units to produce for each product, and they are in cell B16 all the way to F16. As we know already, production quantity has its natural boundary. Here in row 18, we are going to formulate the logical upper limit. And we know that for product one, sure, the logical upper limit is given by R1, which is in cell B14, times the minimum of 4,000 total labor hours available, let's use absolute cell reference, divided by labor hours per unit of shirts, and 4,500 total square yardage of cloth available, divided by the amount of cloth needed for one unit of shirts. return. And we're going to formulate the logical upper limit for the other four products as well. Alright, next let's look at labor hours and cloth constraint. The number of labor hours we're going to use is equal to some product of B5 to F5 and the units produced. We are in cell B16 to F16. Let's use absolute cell reference return. And once we have done that, we can copy and paste the formula for cloth constraint. To formulate our objective function, let's break it down. First of all, let's calculate the uh, total revenue, which is equal to some product. Some product of unit selling price and 
units produced. Once we do that, we can copy the formula and paste it in cell B27 to get the total variable cost. Of course, we are going to formulate the fixed cost for equipment rental as well. It is equal to sum product of fixed cost for equipment rental and our binary decisions, whether we are going to rent the machine or not. In the end, the profit is equal to revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost. Now, let's run our solver. All right, objective is in cell B29. That is a profit which we would like to maximize by changing the following cells. First of all, rental decisions, comma, units produced. Now let's add constraint. First of all, units produced must be no more than their logical upper limit. And then, resource used must be no more than the availability of each resource. Let's click OK. Choose simplex method. Take a look at option. Well, let's make sure we're going to get the uh, real optimal solution. So we change the uh, integer optimality setting to zero. Click OK. I almost forgot about our binary constraint. Let's go ahead and edit the decision variables in cell B14 to F14. Whether to rent the equipment must be BIM binary. Click OK. Now let's solve it. Keep our solver solution. Let's take a look at our optimal solution. In the end, we are just going to produce two products, two and five shorts and jackets. So we're going to make about 965 shorts and 379 jackets. As a result, our profit will be $54,614 and we used all the resources we have in labor and cloth.